Hi, folks. Hi, folks. I would guess from tonight, 65 years after Bill Haley sang Rock Around the Clock, rock and roll is alive and well. Am I right? I have the greatest job in the world. I am so honored and privileged to be importing Def Leppard into the Hall of Fame. What an amazing privilege. I kind of just want to talk. I can't do auto cue, but I can do bits of notes. It's old school, OK? You forgive me. Um, I'm going to quote first from the Joe Elliott book of uh, philosophy, which says, uh, you get one chance to do the good shit. Don't fuck it up. So this is my guideline tonight, OK? I want to do them justice. I really want to do these boys justice. And I'm not going to tell you history. I'm just going to tell you my personal view. I want to tell you how these guys came into my life and how important they are. 1981, cast your minds back. 1981, Queen were in a, in a studio uh, in Munich recording an album called Hot Space. And um, I, I nipped out to see some friends of mine, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. And who should be supporting but a young, precocious bunch of boys called Def Leppard. I got there late, and I missed them. And I felt so bad about it, I, I sought out their dressing room and uh, went in to see them, sort of poked my head through the door and said, hi, guys, I just wanted to say hello, because I miss you, I'm really sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm Brian May from Queen. And they said, as a man, they said, no shit, you're good. <laughs> which was kind of nice, so I think we got on from that point. And they told me that Queen had been a great influence on them, which uh, is always a great thing for me to think about. Um, cut to 1983. You know what you do when you're on tour? We're out on tour, and when you're in the, the cars and, and the planes and whatever, you hit the button to see if anybody's playing your record. So this is what I'm doing, I'm traveling around. Every time I hit the record, every time I hit the button, I'm hearing this amazing kind of clang, this sort of uh, arpeggiated guitar, and I'm hearing, hearing amazing harmonies, this big juicy bass line, I'm hearing these huge fat drums, and it's not Queen, it's these young precocious boys called Def Leppard. And the song is Photograph, this amazing song, which catapulted them to fame. It was never off the radio at that time, and before the album was finished that it came from, Hysteria, they'd sold 10 million copies of that album, which is pretty rare, I tell you. 10 times platinum album. Okay, cut to the September 83. I'm in Los Angeles. Again, we're recording an album, which this time is uh, the works, I think. And um, I go out. This time, Def Leppard are playing the local arena, which is the legendary uh, LA Forum. I go down there, very inconspicuous, I sit at the back, and when these boys hit the stage, I have to tell you, I have never seen anything like it. The ho I've seen some great shows in the Forum, but I've never seen an audience react like that. They got to their feet, they never sat down, and they screamed and shouted the whole way through the performance. Def Leppard killed that night. I went, back to see, I went backstage to see him afterwards, they invited me, and uh, just like when we first played in the States, all their mums and dads are there, very proud mums and dads, and I get introduced to them, and the boys say, will you come up and play with us tomorrow night? They're two nights, so I said yes, and the rest is history. Uh, we played traveling band. It's history except to say that I nearly lost my career and my life because this is pyromania, and the production has all kinds of fire in it, you know? You know what that is? And uh, actually, Joe warned me. He said, watch out for the fireworks at the end, Brian. Think, you know, just, just be careful. But I'm at the end. We finished traveling, and we're up behind the drums, and there's a kind of chasm in front of us where the fire's about to come out. I have no idea. I'm gone. I'm, like, giving it all this, and, and Joe's going, Bri, Bri! And I'm thinking he's just kind of appreciating me, you know? <laughs> but <laughs> he's going, Bri, Bri, the fire! Anyway, this huge sheet of flame comes up in front of me, and just in time, Joe's dragged me out of it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here tonight. So early on in our career, Joe Elliott saved my life. <laughs> 
You know, the history of, of Def Leppard is incredibly colorful and filled with all kinds of stuff, which I can't even go into because I don't have the time. But they started August 1977 in Sheffield, England, uh, which is not a very glamorous place. And as a lot of people have said here, there's a great urge to get out. Um, they recorded 11 incredible albums. Uh, and they played their asses off around the world many, many times. They did it the old-fashioned way. They played and played and played, and they made great music in the, in the studio. Uh, they sold eventually more than 100 million albums. And they endured being very fashionable and being very unfashionable as well, as sometimes happened, particularly uh, in, in England, where sometimes the press wasn't very kind, you know. Uh, I don't know why this happens, but they kind, of, they kind of got attacked, among other things, for making hit records. Now, can I just remind you what some of those hits were? We got Bringing on the Heartbreak, <laughs> Photograph, Foolin', Pour Some Sugar, Armageddon It, Hysteria, Let's Get Rocked, When Worlds Collide, Animal, Love Bites, Rock of Ages, Rocket. It's a long, that isn't even the full list. They released 50 singles, most of which were hits, and many were number ones. Uh, but there was this kind of feeling abroad in the press and in the media, uh, particularly in the UK, as I say, that maybe that made them uncool. Well, let me tell you, those songs, the fact that they wrote real songs that people can sing and carry in their heads, is the reason that Def Leppard will be remembered in hearts and minds long after all of us have left the building. I just want to say something about their endurance. You know, the, the Def Leppard band is a family, an evolving family. Uh, I would say the amazing bass man, Rick Savage, is is really the founder member. He's the only guy who was there at the beginning and he's here at the end. Uh, it's not the end, it's the continuing story. But, um, but very soon Joe Elliott joined him and Joe brought the name with him, which apparently refers to some uh, uh, orally challenged cat of some kind. Um, so these stalwarts are the very uh, the birth of the band. But the family grew and evolved and faced all kinds of adversity. The loss of drummer Rick Allen's uh, arm in 1984 was a massive shock and setback, which would have ended the career of a lesser band. But thanks to the incredible fortitude of Rick himself in bringing himself back, and also... And also thanks to the incredible loyalty and cohesiveness of that family, which is Dev Leopard, in supporting him when he came back, they actually grew in stature and in every way. Not only Rick, but the whole band benefited in a sense. And I was there at Donington when he first came back for that triumphant return. Amazing. Similarly, the loss of the fantastic Rick Meister, uh, Riffmeister, I would call him, Steve Clark in 1991, will always be mourned. What a great player, what a wonderful player. And I think many people thought that that could be a mortal blow to the band, and it could have been for lesser human beings. But the current uh, guitar duo of Phil Collin and, Phil and Viv Campbell is awesome. In fact, I would say Colin and Campbell are truly frightening as a guitar duo, and it's amazing. Uh, not everybody realizes that these guys are not just crowd pleasers. They are also, they embody such an amazing technical excellence, and they have it all, I have to tell you. I regard all these guys as great friends and kind of part of my family. That's why it's so important for me to be here. I wouldn't have let anybody else do this, okay? They all turned up for our Freddie Mercury tribute, which was 1992, and we've played together loads of times. And Joe and I, in particular, have shared many precious and fun moments snatched among the, the madness of touring life. We have a strong bond, and he's one of my dearest pals. When Steve died, Joe says that the first phone call he got was from me. And when the news got out, of Freddie's passing, first phone call I got was from Joe Elliott. So.
These guys are a magnificent rock group in the classic tradition of what a rock group really is. Uh, I'm just going to quote a couple more things. <laughs> Early on, Joe said, what's, the, success, what's the, the story, the secret of a successful rock group? I said, don't split up. <laughs> a few years later, he came back and he said to me, I have a couple of other secrets to being a successful rock group. You, you have to not get fat and you have to keep your hair. <laughs> I have to say, these guys did not get fat, they did not lose their hair, they did not split up, and they are here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. These guys are a great band. They're also, they're also as honest and decent a bunch of magnificent human beings as ever came out of Yorkshire, or Britain, or the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to welcome to induct into the Hall of Fame, Jeff Leppard!